now welcome back to another episode of Boot Like Opinions. And in this episode, me and Evie Ali are going to go over the lip syncs, what we think about each of them, and also what we think about each look for each category that these four queens have served. Boot Like Opinions. Oh my god, we finally did it! This is the finale! We finally crossed the finish line! Oh my god, get it over with. <laughs> Before we move forward, I have a question for you. Did you know that your location can determine what concerts are available to you? Oh my god, I had no idea. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. What is it? What is Surfshark? Surfshark it is an award-winning VPN a virtual private network that allows you to change your location. And my location can determine what content is available to me? I know, right? That sucks. So based on where you live, some contents aren't available to you. So with Surfshark, that can all change with a click of a button when you change your location. And personally, during this pandemic, I am bored of watching the same shows on my streaming services. I want a change. Plus, Surfshark, it is safe to use. You can use it on public Wi-Fi. Plus, the bonus part is that with one subscription, you and your partner or your roommates and friends can watch it in different rooms. So nobody has to fight. I'm going to sign up right now. Now. Now sashay away to the link in the description and use my code Yuha for 83% off your whole subscription and three months free on me and Surfshark. And oh, there's a 30 day money back guaranteed. What can go wrong? Nothing! I cannot watch all of the content that should be available to me. I know, this has been 365 episodes and we finally found a winner. How exciting is this? We did do it. I'm just glad that um, they were able to wrap filming the season before RuPaul had to retire, before she had to fly off to the Galapagos. This shit has been going on forever. <laughs> I asked all my guests before, was this the top four that you've expected? Got Mick and Simone really solidified themselves from the beginning of the competition and made it clear that not only were they here to compete, but they also had bigger messages to fight for. And then Candy has had like a fighter spirit and has this like personality that RuPaul loved. I will say though that I was surprised about Rosé because it took her longer to hit her stride in the competition. But around the end, I was like, yeah, put that there. <laughs> I'm with you after meeting the queens, after seeing the promos and then the reveal. I definitely saw Got Mick and uh, Simone in the top four. I'm with you with Rose. I've said it before, I just thought that she was gonna get eliminated throughout the season because she was almost reaching the highs, but she never really won. So I thought she was gonna get that Jan Sport edit. And then with Candy, just because in the first few episodes she wasn't doing that well, I thought that she wasn't gonna last till top four. That's what I thought. But personally, I'm glad that they're all in the top four and they've all worked hard in it. And I'm glad that this is the top four that we've got. Yeah. So let's go over the lip syncs really quick, okay? So we first up have Rose and Candy. What do you think about the lip sync? It was a cute bar number. Like, you know, they probably would have made a cute $20 walking around the bar, pointing, dancing. I was watching with my boyfriend friend and he complained about the song choice. He was like, I don't know if I would have done this Britney song. And I just disagree. Like, I, I love work. It is like the anthem of the gays and I was bored. Yeah, it was the right winner, I thought. I thought that it was kind of like a bar number as well. They were doing reveals that didn't really make sense. That it was kind of off timing at times as well. And I think Candy showed a little bit more emotions in the song and I think she absolutely did deserve to win this lip sync. It was okay, it was a bar number. <laughs> now the next lip sync was between Simone and Got Mick. What do you think about this next lip sync? I honestly couldn't tell you. Yeah, no, 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 like I know it was super tough, but I was like, yes, hair whips, yes, double reveals. Which hair whip is RuPaul gonna save? I don't know. <laughs> now, quick question for you, Evie. Do you think that because there's a lack of an audience this season for the finale, that the queens weren't bringing it as much as previous season? Because to be honest with you, these lip syncs during this finale was kinda dry. I mean, I feel like that's definitely gotta be a major factor. Like we've all been doing digital drag for the better part of a year now. And I can tell you how much harder it is for me to like, oh yeah, for this camera and like my boyfriend who's recording, we're right there, uh, than it is for like an audience who's there and like giving you energy. 
That being yeah. said, Mama Rue is still like sitting there waving a hundred thousand dollars. So I feel like I would have found the inspiration. <laughs> I'm with you on that as well. Although it might be different, but we have to remember that this is RuPaul's Drag Race, a television show. So a lot of the times you're doing it for the camera. Whether there's five people in the audience, 10 people in the audience, or a thousand people in the audience, you have to play it for the camera and still give it your hundred, if not 120% or more. I feel like they should kind of expect this a little bit because when they lip sync for their lives, there's not an audience, but you still have to give it your all. Yes, there's Michelle. Yes, there's the guest judge. Yes, there's RuPaul and the producers. But I feel like with, you know, being in the finale, you still have to give it your all no matter what. It wasn't enough for me. I mean, they were decent, but it wasn't, you know, finale worthy. Drag is so magical. There's always a way to do more. I really like this because the song has a different energy, especially than something that you would expect from the finale, which is usually like, dance, dance, bop, bop, dance. And this is like slower and sultrier. So for me, this is a harder song to perform because you have to be a better actress at like feeling what Britney's saying in it. It was really on point and she just had so much control. So yeah, I think Simone had that all the way. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I think Simone performed it the way Simone would perform it. Whereas with Got Mick, I felt like she had a little bit of struggle because the train that she had around her waist wasn't giving her much of movement and she was kind of struggling a little bit. She did end up taking it off, but I think she took off a little bit too late in the game that when she took it off, the song was over already. Now yeah. between Simone and Got Mick, I thought that it was the right winner and I didn't really see Got Mick winning just because in the previous episodes that we've seen of Got Mick lip syncing, um, they were all right. You know. Gottmik can perform to some extent, but the amount of like control that some like other more seasoned like performer performers have is apparent next to Gottmik. If I were in her shoes, I would have gone for a look and I would have gone for like a dramatic gag. And I just wasn't, I wasn't taken there. Whereas Simone went for like simplicity. She was like, I've got a reveal. And <laughs> yeah, like that, and that's the thing is, I I didn't, I wasn't passionate about Simone's before outfit. I thought the after outfit was cool, but there was like no storytelling. So like, as far as the clothes go, either one of them could have won it for me, but Simone actually embodied like a feeling a, a little bit better than Got Mick, who was, was just trying to get an idea out. And I agree with you, looked like she was like bogged down by this gigantic draped cape fan. Now the last lip sync is between Simone and Candy. And spoiler alert! If you haven't seen the episode yet, Simone wins this lip sync and takes the crown for season 13. I thought that in this lip sync, I think Simone did win for me. Candy, she looked a little bit, hate to put it this way, she looked a little bit tired. And I think probably ran out of variations because we've seen Candy Muse lip sync like a thousand times during the season and also in the finale as well that when we see her lip syncing, it's not new. It's just kind of candy lip syncing again. So I thought maybe if she brought us a gag, it would have saved her a little bit. Um, same thing with even someone I thought she looked a little bit exhausted a little bit. Yeah, girl, I think reveals should be banned. And I know that's rude. I mean this in the kindest of ways to every drag queen who has ever competed on Drag Race and probably future seasons, but apparently bitches are not creative enough for this format to keep going. <laughs> But we do have to give these queens some credit because they had to do three different looks before lip syncing and also lip syncing again. So I can see where they're coming from, but Simone did win the lip sync for me. I feel like Simone versus Got Mick was probably my favorite lip sync of the night. Um, just cause the energy was there with Simone. All right, so we have three categories to go over this week. And first category is black and white. And we first up have Got Mick. I think Got Mick looks absolutely stunning in this look. It is totally Got Mick. It is totally how Got Mick would go to a finale. She's giving me fashion. She's giving me abstract. She's giving me creativity and also drama. I love the silhouette, how it's huge at the bottom. And we also see the shine in it. And we also see the cutout, big hips. 
finished waist corset and also the head artistry is completely there. I love this look on Got Mick and I think she served it. Yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. Having to use only the colors black and white, I think the way that she really used them to like carve out these shapes like into her hips, create movement was just gorgeous. And like the crowning jewel of it is her weird pale bald head. <laughs> Next up is Candy Muse and there's things about this look that I like and there's things about this look that I don't like. So let's start off with the positives. I like that this is unique. You can tell that it's specifically made for her. You can't find this anywhere else. This is completely new and different for Candy, so I enjoy this about it. I love the hair, I love the swirl in the front, but I think that the proportions and the designs of this is a little bit off. I do think that the piece on the shoulder could have been a little bit out of the way so that it separates the hair from the shoulder piece. And I also think that the trim of the black could have been a little bit thicker and it could have been brought in a little bit more around the waist area just so that it maps out her body a little bit more. But it's cool for Candy. Delicate, pretty, like French girl in the spring. I personally would have liked it if the bottom half was like a little bit fuller, if there were like more to it because it felt very focal at the top for me and it just felt like some fabric kind of flapping down at the bottom. So I would have liked to see like maybe more of like that white and like the black cursives into a giant mm -hmm. full skirt, but yeah. she looks pretty, she looks good. Next up is Rosé and this design is absolutely beautiful on Rosé. I love the hat, I love the prop, I love the bows, I love these colors of how the black and white are placed together to give her a body because we still kind of see the silhouette of the hourglass with the black color and I think she looks great. And I don't really see Rosé in this, I would totally wear it. But I think to show Rosé off a little bit more, just to cheat it a little bit more, is maybe to have the hat back a little bit, just so that we see more of the face because the boat is so big and her head is covered and she does have the umbrella. Or I would probably make the boat a little bit smaller, just so that we see a little bit more of Rosé. Or maybe she like heard all of the fans' critiques of her makeup and was just trying to hide it. So like she could have gone the other direction too, with like a bigger bow and like a lower hat. <laughs> But again, this outfit is stunning, it's beautiful. It does look really gorgeous. I don't see a specific like personality or point of view. I see a very talented designer um, on a drag queen. Because as we have to remember that this is RuPaul's Drag Race where you're supposed to show yourself. If this was a fashion runway show, I would have loved the designer. I would have loved the design. I would have loved this outfit because in a regular fashion runway show, the model, matter <laughs> you know we, yeah it doesn't really matter you know i hate to put it this way they're just supposed to be clothes hangers for the outfits and mm -hmm. when rose is wearing this i don't see rose in it i see the designer and if this again was going down a runway show fabulous but this is rupaul's drag race and you do have to show yourself yeah everything like one of my favorite designs of the night i just can't in my mind convince myself that's rose <laughs> Next up is Simone, and I think she looks absolutely beautiful, giving me totally Simone in this look. She's got this big hair, big silhouette, and I think this is the most dramatic look out there look that Simone has served because we've seen in the season is that she loves to show her body. Her looks are a little bit simplistic, not in a bad way because they're still fashion, but this is I think the most she's done with a silhouette that she's given us. I love the hair, I love the bandana in the hair, and I love how the bananas are also on the dress as well to reflect who she is, and I think she looks great. She looks stunning. Yeah, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. For me, this is one of my favorite looks of the night because it shocks me to see Simone a, in like so much clothing and so much fabric in the first place. Like she usually shows a lot of skin. This is that old school, like lots of drag, lots of hair, lots of like bandanas. And I, I love it. I love, love it. The next category is red. But first up we have Guat Mick in this Keith Haring inspired jumpsuit. I like how interesting the shapes are, especially in the pants. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. But I would have liked it if she would have used the shapes to create more movement throughout because it looks right now like she's like some cutout cookie. If I'm gonna nitpick, I just would have liked some
some like asymmetrical movement or something. Yeah, this look, it's cool, it's all right. We've seen better from Gothic. And I think I want more for the finale for Gothic. Even though I know they have to do three looks, even though it's a lot of looks, they still should bring it 100%. No leniency for me, girl. They do are serving like more looks in one finale than anyone has ever had to in the past. It's gorgeous, it's visually impactful. I could see it. This would be really a gorgeous look for like an editorial. I like it a lot. I'm not gonna pretend I like it for a finale. <laughs> Next up is Candy Muse in Forever 21. <laughs> Not Forever 21, girl. <laughs> but I do have to say that she is giving us candy. She's giving us Brooklyn. She has that little boom box that she has in a smaller version now of how she had it in the first episode of the premiere. And she also has her headphones, but yeah. You know, it's a dress. I actually think I would have really liked this idea more if she had turned it into any sort of like gown or like formal wear. Cause right now it's just like very street wear and it looks good. Candy looks good. I like the reference to like her boom box, but girl, you're trying to win drag race and you're really gonna walk out there in like a little zip up skirt and a bra. Like that's it, I don't know. She does look sexy though. She does look beautiful, but I wanna see finale, you know. I think you should be looking like you're trying to like win a finale of a drag competition. Not like go hop in between two gigs, be like, oh, I just finished at this gig. Let me grab my bag and I've got a cute little gig to walk down the street in. Like that's very what it's giving me. Next is Rose. Maybe. I'm biased, but I think she's just having a harder time like selling her fashion as who she is. Like these are really nice garments. I just don't know if I like see a personality or a perspective that's genuinely uniquely Rosé's in there. I think she looks cool. I'm with you. I don't really see Rosé in this. I see an amazing design. It looks really good though. She looks fantastic. Minus that ugly little floop wig. I agree with you. I don't think she needs the wig. We we really want to focus and differentiate the headpiece. So I think if she was bald, I don't know if she has extra time to do all of that. And I think she could have sold it a little bit better. I feel like with her in this, she's just walking. It's a cool outfit though. Yeah. And finally, we have Simone and, oh my God, I am split down the middle. Like on one hand, Actually, on both hands, she nailed it. <laughs> and she looks amazing. Like the entire like garment is made out of nails. She's got her like little emoji hands in her hair. But I already went on my candy muse, like wearing a two piece bikini. It's great. It's the finale and Simone has done essentially this exact same silhouette so many times throughout the season that I expect to see Simone in a bikini. I like that she subverted the idea and had all the nails, but it's still just a skimpy dress. First, I'm gonna shout out that I agree with you. It's something that we've seen from Simone before in a similar silhouette that it is not shocking, it is not wow, it's not exciting, but it is cool though. I had to give her props that she is serving herself as if how she would go to the runway. I would say maybe if she just turned this into a gown as simplistic as basic as that sounds, I think this would have read a little bit more finale to me. Yeah, that's actually just how I feel about a lot of these ideas, is if you take the cool ideas that they already had going on and then just thought about like red carpet, thought about finale, like it would have been so much better. But I do like how the nails are in the hair and as well as in the dress, because with a dress like this we've seen on other queens before is that when they wear a silhouette like this, they're just fringes, they're just sequins, they're just beads. But I like her take on this, that she incorporated nails throughout the rest of the outfits. When she walks and moves, there's movement in there and it kind of goes back and forth like this, kind of like fringes. And I also like the nails at the bottom of the shoes, kind of sticking out. I love this look. But again, I also am with you half and half with this. I like her take on this, that it's Simone. It still shows Simone. But again, it's not shocking and wowing enough for a finale. Yeah, that it's her, it's got a perspective in it. And for just being a skimpy dress at a finale, it still has like a really, really cool stamp on it. So like, I like it, but also I want more. And the last category is finale. And we first up have Got Mick. This is a beautiful, this is art, art, drama, 
I love the shoulder pieces. I love the back collar. I love the heart in the middle. Also with the electric gold bolt colors just directing at it. I love the silhouette at the bottom of the hips, even with the cinched waist and the bottom. She's like almost on top of a big top of a circus. Cause you know, she always referenced herself as like a clown. So I like how her take on this as if she's on top of a big top. And she is the circus. Hands down. I love the devilish horns. She's been a horny few times this season. I wonder what she's trying to say. <laughs> yeah, she's waiting for Jamal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's so much going on in this outfit. And you know how like sometimes there can be so much going on and it's too much? This is the right amount of too much. Like she's working with all these different colors and textures. There's spikes. There's this weird leather feel. There's these shapes. It reminds me a lot of like any final boss you'd play in like some video game based off in an anime or something like it's just so elaborate in so many unnecessary ways that no human being would ever wear and Gottmik looks amazing in it. Amazing. Gottmik over here looks grand. She looks regal. She looks like she's going to a ball. I think she looks chef's kiss. Beautiful. Love it. I would totally wear this if I have the money for it. Up next is Candy Muse and... Aww. Just like her first look, there's parts of it that I like and there's parts that I don't like. I love the headdress. I think it's beautiful. It is proportioned well. It is gigantic. And that from far away, we see it on the stage. Now with the piece going around the one shoulder and also the piece of the blue, I don't really like it that much. It reads a little bit drag on a dime to me, to be honest with you. I think with the shoulder piece could have pushed down a little bit more just so that we see the face a little bit more because it is hiding almost one third of her face and we want to see her face. And the piece of the blue, I wish that it was thin and then big because we see it on the darker skirt at the top that it is diagonal from thin to thick. So I want to see it reflected on the piece as well. A gradation of like thickness. I think that also would have looked good. Because right now they're not connecting. It's visually striking from afar, but it's not very balanced. She just looked incomplete to me. She looks like she was like in a fitting for her finale dress. But it's cool, it's different for Candy. I do see finale in this, so. But the design itself is not there. The ideas she has going on here are gorgeous and I would really like to see this edited. It is grand though. I don't think it looks good. <laughs> Next up is Rose. Now this is how Rose would yeah. go to a finale. This is giving me Rose from head to toe. I love the shoulder pieces, I love the collar, I love the hair, I love the dress, I love the train in the back. I think this is well made, it's well structured, it is detailed, and I also love how the boots are made specifically for this look as well. This is giving me Rose, love it. And it's like quilting in the boots and all the details in this are what really make it for me. And to make like green and white work for like a finale dress color is very difficult. I really love the palette of this. She looks amazing and I see Rose in this. Like I see her personality, I see her point of view. I see like what she's actually been giving us this whole season, like with her actual drag. I approve, this is the Rose I was waiting for. And that train, that's so cool. Now something that just crossed my mind right now, um, Evie, I wanna ask you. Do you think we're not really seeing uh, Rose and the other two looks because we didn't really see much of personality from Rose during the season? Because she didn't really break out of her shell that much until later on the season. She took longer definitely to come out of her shell and open up more. What she has showed of us of her personality, her personality is like the professional, the put together, the theater, the businesswoman. Maybe that is it, I don't know. For me, this is a lot clearer to like the character she's presented. We know Rose is Scottish. We know Rose is like a girly, frilly girl. And this look says all of that. Whereas like literally everything else has just been fashion and she hasn't fed us anything else to tell us what that fashion means to her. Yeah, I guess. I think it also has to do with the way that she was selling it to in the other two looks. I think she was just kind of walking, you know? Yeah, maybe we're just too critical. <laughs> Last to walk down the finale is Simone. And I think she looks gorgeous. She's giving you Medusa and she's giving you Grecian goddess. I'm cool with this look. Based on this runway between the four, I would say got mixed one over for me. I think she is probably... 
second for me. I think I'm okay with this look because I've seen better from her in the first look, that's why. It's not a bad look, I still think it's cool, but I just think that she could have pushed more because I saw her pushing it more in the first look. The black and white outfit is still so far my top Simone look too, but I really love the details in like that arm piece and I love the details in that like breast piece. It's so gorgeous, like just in that little piece. I don't know, maybe it's just cause I saw that and I was like, I want that boob and shoulder. And then the rest is like a fashion toga, which I think is very Simone, but I see what you're saying. I'm just jealous of her shoulder. <laughs> now Evie, who is your favorite look or queen from all these runways? Ooh, okay, off of the black and white runway, I loved Mick on that runway, and maybe it's because their entire drag is black and white. <laughs> the black and white category for me was Simone. The second one for me was Simone as well for the ref. I liked Rosé's the most. It had like cool ideas going on there. For the last runway, I would say Got Mick. Yeah, Got Mick all the way on that. Like, ah, uh, performance wise, I don't know. Just toss it to anyone. Give it, throw, throw a dog a bone, throw it in the audience. Fashion wise, overall, it had to be Got Mick. They came with like really distinct looks that spoke overall really well to like what their drag is and what they do. So to even it out, my favorite queen for all these runways is Simone. So congratulations! Simone ate for you. All right. Not only did Simone win RuPaul's Drag Race, she just won Yuha's Bootleg Opinions Race. <laughs> Yes, Simone, you won Bootleg Opinions of Drag Race, but Got Mick won your Bootleg Opinion Award. <laughs> no, none of you deserve it. I'm sorry. I'm still the current reigning in my own Bootleg Opinions race. <laughs> and I am the winner of season 10.5. You can always have your Bootleg Opinions and award. Now, Evie, thank you so much for joining Bootleg Opinions this week. We made it, honey. We made it through season 13. And where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Oddly Evie, on Facebook at Evie Oddly, on the street as the dude with green and yellow hair. Fabulous. And my name is Yuba Hamasaki. You can find me on all platforms under Yuha Masaki. Bye, Evie! Tell all stars! Bye! <laughs> all right, y'all, here is my moment of grace. And as usual, thank you, thank you so much. And I got a lot of comments saying it's the House of Dry. So from one member of the House of Dry, I want to say a huge thank you. And to always stay dry. Thank you to Master Michael Keane, Takura McCulloch, thank you so much. Kenny Keane, as usual, thank you so much, baby. Josh Cuddle, thank you, darling. Helen Lopez, thank you, thank you, thank you. Brian Chow, Guaani as well. Christian Fernandez, oh my lord, Jesus, sir. And they say that supporting local drag no longer exists. You are supporting local drag at its finest. Mohammed A, I'm not gonna say your last name because I know I'm gonna mess it up. So thank you so much, Mohammed. Christian Duran, oh my lord. We have to stop meeting like this on this app. We also have Peter Gonzalez, thank you so much, baby. And Tara Spencer, thank you, darling, and thank you so much for your kind words. Thank you all so much. Till next time, bye!